Let us now again revisit an example we've looked at earlier. So the example is f of x equals to x to the third minus 3x plus 1. If you want, we can do the domain here minus 2 to 3, but it won't make much of a difference now because now we want to use second derivative tests to classify local extreme points. And what did the second derivative test say? So second derivative tests says the following. So if f, so I'm, I'm being slightly sloppy here, but this is basically how you remember it. So if f prime at c is equal to zero, then if f double derivative at c is positive, this implies that the function is doing something like this, and you have to have a local minimum point. And if f double derivative is negative, this implies that your function is looking like this, having a stationary point here. So this is a local minimum and a local maximum. That's how you remember it. And now we compute the derivative here. And we get 3x squared minus 3, which is 3x squared minus 1. And this is 0 if and only if x is equal to plus minus 1. And this means that, so notice the second derivative test needs stationary points as input. So this will not tell us anything about the local extremal points uh, being at endpoints, whether or not they're maximum or minimum points, unless of course they're stationary. And in this case, they aren't. So these are the two stationary points. So we can now do the double derivative at x first, which now is 6x. And then we can see that the double derivative at 1 is 6, so it's positive. And the double derivative at minus 1 is equal to minus 6, which is negative. This implies that x is equal to 1 is what? It's a local minimum. And this implies that x equals to minus 1 is a local maximum. And then we can go to a plot of this function. And we can see here that, sure, at minus 1, we have a local maximum. And at 1, we have a local minimum. And here we can see that the double derivative appears to be negative. And here the double derivative appears to be positive exactly matching our intuition. So basically you can say that the second derivative test allows us to get this information here without making a table of signs. And in fact, it's the making of table of signs that's usually called the first derivative test. So when you check that, well, here the derivative is growing, here the derivative is decreasing, aha, we have a local maximum here, that's called the first derivative test. And now this is replaced by looking at the second derivative. And this can be very useful for functions where you can figure out the, the sign uh, of the double derivative at that point, but you'll have difficulties figuring out the sign of the derivative uh, in a neighborhood around that point.